Good evening. Welcome to the meeting of the Skokie Village Board for Monday, June the 7th, 2021. As you may have noticed if you follow the Village Board meetings, uh, you will see that the Board is meeting in person. This is the first time in over a year that we have been able to do that, and I want to welcome everybody here. Uh, I have a short statement to read uh, as an introduction to the meeting. This evening, public comments will be only received electronically in order to comply with the State of Illinois gubernatorial disaster proclamation. Members of the public who wish to comment as to an item on the published agenda or to comment during public comments must submit their statement or question in writing to the village manager's office and all properly submitted statements or questions will be presented and read during the relevant portion of the meeting. Written comments may be submitted by email to publiccomments at skokie.org before or during the meeting. By mail to Village of Skokie Village Manager's Office, 5127 Oakton, Skokie 60077, or via the Village's Dropbox located by the public entry to Village Hall. Uh, I would ask the public to Please stay tuned. This coming Friday, we are expecting that the governor will announce that he is lifting his emergency disaster proclamation. Whether, in fact, that will mean that we will be open entirely to the public remains to be discovered. Our anticipation is that the next village board meeting, the second one in June, will be open to the public and we will be resume doing our monthly business as we always had been doing pre-COVID. Nevertheless, uh, this will be guided by the governor's new declaration. So please, if, you're, if this is of interest to you, follow this on the village's website where we will make an announcement one way or the other. And now, this evening, it's my pleasure to introduce our village clerk, Promote Shaw, who will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The meeting will come to order, and the clerk will please call the roll. Trustee Sutker. Here. Trustee Robinson. Here. Trustee Poon. Here. Trustee Johnson. Here. Trustee Pure Slovin. Is here. With on Zoom, okay. Trustee Pure on Zoom. I am here. Mayor Wendy. Here we have a quorum. The next item is approval of the consent for this evening's agenda. A motion is in order, Trustee Sutker, seconded by, in just one second, yeah, Trustee Klein, Trustee Johnson. Oh. Could I remove um, 11B from the consent agenda? about the 9016 Gross Point Road property. Sure. Thank you. And also, I am going to remove uh, the resignation of James Specker. Uh, he will not be leaving the Human Relations Commission. I'm uh, glad to be able to tell everybody he will remain on the commission. Uh, he has done a great job as a uh, Human Relations Delegate to the uh, Public Safety Commission. Uh, there has been some question about a couple resignations from our boards. Uh, the Village of Skokie's longtime practice has been that elected officials are not eligible to be on village boards or commissions. 
Uh, there are a couple members who are under resignations this evening. Uh, one was elected just this last April. Another is uh, a member of a school board. Uh, under normal circumstances, they would have been removed last year at this time. Uh, that was my mistake. Frankly, I was paying attention to something else, which is called COVID. And we were in the midst of working on the Economic Development COVID Task Force, several other things as well. And I was not paying a lot of attention to the composition of the boards and commissions. Ordinarily, boards and commissions do not meet in July and August. Uh, there are a couple that do at the call of the chair, but most of them do not. So I was not. This time of year, we ordinarily have uh, a lot of new appointments, reappointments, resignations, and so on, because this is the end of the work year for the boards and commissions. They will resume their functioning in September. I anticipate this September, they will begin resume meeting in person like we are. So uh, that's just an explanation of uh, a couple of the resignations. But Mr. Specker will be remaining, and so I'm removing that. And Trustee Johnson's uh, wish also uh, Corporation Council item B will be removed from the consent agenda. Uh, is there anything else anybody wanted removed? If not, uh, call the roll, please. Trustee Sutker? Aye. Trustee Robinson? Aye. Trustee Kuhn? Aye. Trustee Johnson? Aye. Trustee Pierre Slovin? Aye. Trustee Klein? Aye. Mayor Van Dusen? Aye. The motion passes. I would like to introduce uh, some members of uh, the boards and commissions which just have been approved. Uh, they are with us by Zoom this evening, and I would like to introduce them. Uh, Joe Meshek on the Appearance Commission. Joe? Harry Litberg. Harry, I see Harry there. Alma Lickick. Alma? She was scheduled to be with us. Talia Jabaya. Talia? There we are. Uh, Jim McVane, Human Relations. Kurt Hansen, EDC. Kurt? Megan Beminovich, EDC. Megan? And uh, Michael Delanoy, EDC as well. Thanks to all of you uh, for volunteering and giving us your time. Uh, you will be put to work, I promise you. Uh, as I mentioned, most of the commissions will not be meeting in uh, July and August, but will resume meeting in September. Uh, some of you may have a couple meetings during the summer, but more than likely you will not. Uh, we are grateful for the work that the commissions do. We look at the village as being something akin to a three-legged stool. We have our professional staff led by our village manager, John Lockerbie. We have our boards and commissions which advise the village board on almost every subject that touches on the life of the village. And then we have the political body, which is all of us up here, the elected officials. When all three of us are functioning well, the village benefits greatly. And we want to thank you for the work that you will be doing. Uh, you will be putting in a lot of time but I think you're going to find it beneficial because this is a great village and you will be making a major contribution. Thank you very much for uh, coming aboard. And Jolly? Hi. Sorry, I, 
just realized I passed over you. I apologize. Thank you. So thank you, everybody. Uh, we have a proclamation this evening, which I would like to read. And uh, we have with us uh, Brian Williams. Brian? And from the library, Nancy Kim Phillips. Brian was, is, is with Skokie United, which is helping to do the Juneteenth organizing along with the library. Whereas, President Abraham Lincoln signed the Amansa Proclamation on January 1st, 1863, ordering the freedom of all people enslaved in Confederate territory. And whereas, on June 19th, 1865, Union Major General Gordon Granger announced the end of the Civil War and the signing of the Emancipation Proclamation in Galveston, Texas, legally freeing the last of the Confederacy's enslaved people. And whereas Juneteenth, also known as Emancipation Day or Freedom Day, has been a tradition in the United States for more than 150 years, commemorating the Galveston announcement and celebrating the freedom of African Americans. And whereas this Juneteenth, the 100th anniversary of the Tulsa Massacre, the one hundred, the one year, excuse me, anniversary of George Floyd's death, and the violent deaths of too many black Americans, including Skokie resident Ricky Birdsong in 1999, compel us to acknowledge and reckon with the painful history and legacy of slavery and racial injustice in the United States. And whereas in 1961, the first African American family purchased a home in the village of Skokie. And their courage and perseverance, as well as the establishment of the Skokie Human Relations Commission in 1961, in the passage of the first Fair Housing Ordinance in 1968, paved the way for 5,000 black residents of African American and diverse ethnic cultures who currently call Skokie home. And whereas black leaders in education, government, business, faith communities, journalism, sports and entertainment have enriched Skokie, Chicago land, and the country. And whereas the first Juneteenth celebration in the village of Skokie will take place on June 18th to the 19th, 2021, to both celebrate the presence and the contributions of black residents in our community, and to recommit ourselves to the goal of a just society where all are fully free. Now, therefore, I, George Van Dusen, mayor of the village of Skokie, Illinois, do hereby declare June 18th through the 19th, 2021, as Juneteenth in the village of Skokie, and urge all residents to recognize the significance of this celebration in African American history and in the heritage of our nation and village. And I'd like to call upon Brian Williams. Brian? Good evening, Mayor. Good evening, trustees, clerk. Good evening, everyone. And thank you for the opportunity to discuss the planned events for Juneteenth. Um, it's really inspiring to hear you um, you share that proclamation. So thank you for that. Um, my name is Brian Williams, the president of Skokie United. It is our mission to engage our community to build a diverse, equitable, and inclusive anti-racist space through dialogue, events, and relationships. So that is kind of why and how Juneteenth started. The planning of this celebration started two years ago during a Skokie United meeting, which led to a conversation with John Marcourt of Skokie Park District. And that just continued to grow and we began to expand our partnership. This past um, winter, we started expanding our partnerships to include Niles Township, Skokie Park District, of course, Sketchbook, The Village, The Library, and Oakland Community College. 
there was much excitement about the weekend's events. On Friday, June 18th, we will hold our opening ceremonies on the Village Green right outside when, from where you're sitting now. And that will begin at 6 p.m. That will go for about an hour and a half. And we're going to have speakers and presentations. And it should be a delight for everyone to watch, stream it online, or to be present. On June 19th, Juneteenth, the Evanston present and future will lead Evanston's parade, and we are encouraged to participate in that parade that should start at about 11.30. We'll also head over to the Devonshire Cultural Center at 2 o'clock p.m. for a lot of children and family-focused events, and that will go until 5 p.m. During that time, please bring a diaper, diaper package or baby wipes or toiletries for the Niles Township Food Foundation Drive. We want to thank the village for the health department vaccine clinic that will also be held during that time at Devonshire. Please bring your appetite for Bobito's Bites. There will be a wonderful um, video demonstration, food de demonstration for you to kind of get your, your appetite ready and order food for that afternoon activity. But then later on that evening, we're going to have activities held at Sketchbook where freedomish music, poetry, and food will be served. For more information, please go to SkokieUnited.com. And I'm excited about this opportunity for our first um, uh, Juneteenth event here in Skokie, partnering with our, our, our sister city in Evanston in a continued effort to bring us all together to celebrate and observe this really important holiday. So thank you all for, for contacting us and, and being a part of this work and acknowledging this work. And I really, really appreciate all that you've done um, with the proclamation, and I look forward to you all being present on Friday, June 18th, and Saturday, June 19th. Brian, thank you. Nancy, did you have any comments that you would like to share? Sure, thank you, Mayor. Um, I'm Nancy Kim Phillips. I'm the Community Engagement Manager at the Skokie Public Library. I also want to just give a shout out to the Health Department. Um, for working with in the, us on the planning on Saturday to provide um, COVID-19 vaccinations as well, in, in addition to all the many events. And we are just honored to support the efforts of Skokie United, along with the Village, Park District, Sketchbook, and others in planning this first Skokie Community Juneteenth celebration. So I hope uh, to see all of you there. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we're all looking forward to it, and we do encourage everybody to participate uh, as much as they possibly can. Thank you for everything you've done, and uh, congratulations again to the library on its uh, reincarnation, as it were. It's, uh, it's a beautiful uh, job that you've done. Next item on the agenda is report of our village manager, John Lockerbie. Thank you, mate. Thank you, Mayor Van Dusen and Village Board. Good evening, everyone. Item A is regarding an interior and exterior TIF tax increment financing rehabilitation program grant for 8038 Lincoln Avenue, Take Flights Spirits, LLC. The Village offers a downtown incentives program as part of the Village's desire to attract retailers and restaurants in downtown Skokie. Take Flight Spirits, LLC, the new owner of the former Margie's Flowers property, located at 8038 Lincoln Avenue, has requested financial assistance under the Village's Interior and Exterior Rehabilitation Programs. Ms. Carrie Cole, who is with us this evening, is the owner-operator of Take Flight Spirits and will feature a back-of-house rum, gin, and whiskey spirits production staging and storage facility, and a front of house tasting room. Take Flight Spirits will necessitate a significant build out of the building facing Lincoln Avenue, including a complete gut rehab of the interior, demolition, tasting room, office, event space build out, including masonry, metal and wood, plastic and finishes work, upgraded plumbing, HVAC and electrical systems, construction of two new bathrooms, refinishing of floor to polished concrete, framing and drywall for bar patrons seating, painting, new acoustical ceilings and fire suppression, as well as other related equipment and improvements. 
Scheduled improvements for the exterior facade include upgrades to existing storefront, new exterior rear garage style door, parking lot grading to accommodate ADA requirements, new front door and exterior signage, the estimated fixed asset construction cost to prepare the interior and exterior facade for the new uses is approximately $360,000. The maximum grant under the Village's program, including $3,000 for reimbursable <coughs> architectural fees, is expected to be the maximum allowed amount of $99,250. Additional purchases to be made by the take flight team, including still equipment, fermentation tanks, boilers, chillers, coolers, lab equipment, plus installation costs, along with tasting room furniture and fixtures, will contribute to an over $420,000 investment by the owners. Grant funds will be transferred on a rebate basis following completion of all work proof of payments to all contractor, contractors and actual operation of the new business. I concur with staff's recommendation. Leslie Murphy has been the point person for this and respectfully request mayor and board approval of the interior exterior rehab improvement grant estimated at a not to exceed amount of $99,250. A motion on the manager's recommendation on the rehab grant for 8038 Lincoln Avenue, Take Flight Spirits LLC is in order. Trustee Klein, seconded by Trustee Kuhn. Are there any comments or questions? Yeah, I have to ask. Here we go. Uh, that's right. Here. I just want to get a clarification. <laughs> When you say that you do whiskeys, does that include scotch? <laughs> we are looking at the possibility of doing an American single malt. So it wouldn't be as peaty as, you know, your Lagavulin or other scotchy scotches. But uh, we are looking forward to experimenting and really bringing our own twist to the spirit industry. <laughs> We're so glad to be here. <laughs> uh, it's next to uh, needs and wants, in case anybody is trying to. So if you need coffee, you can go to needs and wants, and then afterwards or beforehand, you can stop by and possibly have some scotch or other forms of whiskey. Uh, call the roll, please. Trustee Sutter. Aye. Trustee Robinson. Aye. Trustee Kuhn? Aye. Trustee Johnson? Aye. Trustee Pure Slovin? Aye. Trustee Klein? Aye. Mayor Mendoza? Aye. And welcome. We look Thank forward you. to uh, Thank you so much. We're so excited. As, w as are we, uh, in many different ways. <laughs> be great to have you. You'll be a wonderful addition. Thank you. Thank you. That's a hard act to follow, but. <laughs> Garbage. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Item B is regarding a, an extension of the existing agreement for single family recycling collection. The village's five-year contract with Lakeshore Recycling Systems, commonly known as LRS, our recycling vendor for single family households, concluded May 31st of this year. Because of the foregoing and continuing uncertainties in the marketplace, it is a poor time to go out for competitive bids on a long-term recycling contract. As discussed with the Village Board in our recent budget hearings, the recycling marketplace has been in considerable turmoil for the last several years. This has been driven by changes in the recycling commodities market as an outgrowth of changes in the wor worldwide market for recyclables and increased processing costs. Disruption occurred by increasingly stringent standards for contamination, which limited the acceptance of materials overseas. This was then exacerbated by the closure of key marketplaces, which decimated the recycling commodities marketplace. These circumstances were then further impacted by COVID. After many discussions, Lakeshore Recycling proposed two one-year contract extensions that would increase the rate for curbside recycling collection 
and processing from the current price of $4.85 per unit to $5.78 per unit in FY fiscal year 2022, followed by an increase to $6.01 per unit in FY 2023. While these price increases are of significance, we believe that issuing a bid in the current marketplace may in fact result in higher pricing. Lakeshore has provided good service to the village under this contract. It is staff's recommendation that the village enter into two one-year extensions with Lakeshore Recycling Systems for the collection, transportation, and processing of recyclables with the pricing indicated above. I concur with staff's recommendation and respectfully request mayor and board approval. A motion to concur with the manager's recommendation and extending the contract with Lakeshore Recycling for two one-year contract extensions. Trustee Sutker, seconded by Trustee Robinson. Are there any comments or questions? Being none, uh, call the roll, please. Trustee Sutker? Aye. Trustee Robinson? Aye. Trustee Kuhn? Aye. Trustee Johnson? Aye. Trustee Pierre Slovin? Aye. Trustee Klein? Aye. Mayor Windusen? Aye. The motion passes. That completes my report this evening. Thank you. Uh, the next item on the agenda is report of our Corporation Council. Your eyes have not deceived you. Uh, Michael Lurge is not able to be with us this evening. In his place is Assistant Corporation Counsel Barbara Mangler. Well, thank you, Mayor. Unfortunately, I seem to be having some technical difficulties over oh. here. <laughs> we'll, we'll turn it on over here. Okay. And Nick seems to be having some. <laughs> Maybe if I talk loud. That'll work. Barbara, you have passed the first test of the oh, evening. <laughs> I can stay. Thank you, Mayor. Welcome, everyone, and good evening. Uh, items A, C, and D were passed or adopted with the approval of the consent agenda earlier in the evening. Item B, item B is an ordinance that will reclassify the zoning of 9008 to 9018 Gross Point Road from an M2 light industry district to a B2 commercial district commonly known as 9008 to 9018 Gross Point Road. The property is a single lot containing four non-conforming detached residences and has been zoned for industrial purposes since at least 1946. The property owner wishes to reclassify the zoning in order to construct a dental office, which is a permitted use in a B2 commercial district. The requested zoning change is consistent with the comprehensive plans, manufacturing, and service employment designations for the property. And it's up for second reading and adoption. A motion is in order. Trustee Klein, seconded by Trustee Sutker. Trustee Johnson, did you, did um, you have a comment or? I had a couple concerns with this rezoning that I, I expressed when it came up for the first reading. One being that these are, are rental homes. So this is a rezoning that's, that's gonna displace renters, I presume. Um, and I, I totally understand the, the economic perspective on this. Um, from a sustainability perspective, this seems to be a pretty clear kind of net negative. Um, there's a lot of green space on this property. There are dozens of um, really beautiful trees that I'm assuming most will be removed. Um, and if this is shifting from residential to um, commercial, this is gonna result in a, a much higher in energy intensive use of this space. Um, these are some of my some of my concerns. Is uh, yeah, go ahead. if I can just no. address one thing, it's not shifting from residential Excuse me. Yeah. to commercial. It's shifting from industrial to commercial. Do we know already non they are non conforming uses on the property right now? Do we know how long these have been non conforming residential units? Um, well, since at least nineteen forty six. Okay. 
since this is kind of in effect, you know, it's, I know it's not technically a zoned residential, but since this is kind of in effect been a residential property for 75 years, um, yeah, that's kind of on my mind. Okay. John, did you, did you have any comments? No, I, I think the um, the comprehensive plan um, has has been discussed. Um, the the marketplace is also at play here, um, with the um, homes existing for a long time. It's zoned industrial, and it's being uh, requested to be rezoned um, from a private marketplace perspective. Okay. Any other comments or questions? The property owner right now, how long has that property owner been there and owned that residential? I don't use have that well, he's, cons math. he's oh. consolidated the four properties. They were each, in, my understanding is they were each individually owned and he has bought each Got one. Got it, okay. That's and then thought. requested okay. that they be consolidated and under the comprehensive plan, he's requested the rezoning. And the tenants are aware of the potential. Oh, yes. Yes, yeah. yes. This, yes. Okay, uh, call the roll, please. Trustee Sutker? Aye. Trustee Robinson? Aye. Trustee Kuhn? Aye. Trustee Johnson? We'll vote nay. Trustee Pierre Slovin? Aye. Trustee Klein? Aye. Mayor Aye. The motion passes. Uh, item E is a request for an executive session in accordance with paragraph 2C11 of the Illinois Open Meetings Act pertaining to the review and discussion of pending litigation. A motion on the request for an executive session is in order. Trustee Klein, seconded by Trustee Sutker. Uh, there is no debating uh, a motion for an open meetings act uh, for an executive session under the open meetings act. Uh, call the roll, please. Trustee Sutter? Aye. Trustee Robinson? Aye. Trustee Kuhn? Aye. Trustee Johnson? Aye. Trustee Pierre Slovin? Aye. Trustee Klein? Aye. Mayor Wendy? Nay. <laughs> just, just like, oh, okay, there was, uh, I'm, I'm actually voting aye. I just wanted to see if anybody was paying attention. That was all. And that concludes the Corporation Council's report. Thank you. Uh, the next item is report of our planned commission. Chairman of the commission, Paul Luke, with Matt Brandmeier. Uh, good evening, uh, Mayor, members of the board. Uh, tonight's case is case 2020-12P, a special use permit request. During the October 1st meeting, or excuse me, October 1st, 2020, meeting of the Planning Commission, we reviewed the request for a special use permit for outdoor storage in conjunction with BCLS landscaping in an M2 light industry district. Although the site is, a, is actually an aesthetic improvement to the previous use, the property is already being used for outdoor storage. It has been since well before this petition. Some of the existing site improvements were made without prior re review by the village. The special use permit will legalize the use of the site and correct previous and current deficiencies, including the completion of the fencing removing parking lot spaces that encroach into the right of way and improve parking uh, in the lot and driveway services. The commission has also included enforceable timelines for required improvements in the recommended conditions. The petitioner has provided all the requested corrections to the site and land landscaping plans. This discussion from the commission included whether Corrective action sh should have been completed before the hearing of the case, and we praise the cleanup and the beautification efforts of the petitioner. No additional relief was, was discovered during the review of this case. Legal news was advertised. No interested parties uh, came forward. The appearance commission uh, was not needed uh, 
to approve this. And the plan commission on recommend, had recommended passage on a unanimous vote of nine members must, uh, present. A motion. So, oh, sorry. A motion to concur with the plan commission's recommendation on special use permit 2020-12P is in order. Trustee Sucker seconded by Trustee Kuhn. Great, thank you. Are there any comments or questions? Uh, call the roll. Trustee Sucker. Aye. Trustee Robinson. Aye. Trustee Kuhn. Aye. Trustee Johnson. Aye. Trustee Pierre Aye. Trustee Klein. Aye. Mayor Wendell. All right, the motion passes. Uh, thank you, members of, of the board and the mayor. And uh, Talia, I'd like to welcome you to the Planning Commission, and I will be in contact with you within the next couple of weeks. Uh, and that concludes my report. Thank you. Uh, the concluding item this evening before the executive session is public comment. The first. Excuse me. Hello? Yes. Hi, my name is William Sadlowski, the owner of BCLS. I oh, have one yeah. comment and one question. I want to thank everyone for their participation and allowing us to move forward with our plans to be a active business partner in Skokie. I thank everyone. And my second question, not to be rude, do I need to stay on the line, sir? <laughs> uh, we, we thank you for the thank you. And uh, we look forward to the project and the answer to the second comment was no, you are excused for the evening. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're and welcome. everyone stay healthy. Thank you. You do the same. Thank you. John. The first citizen comment is from Maggie Vandermeer. Dear Mayor Van Dusen and Board of Trustees, I'm writing to you today about your decision to deny Jill Manrique a position on the Public Safety Commission because she is a board member in District 219. When she pointed out to you the fact that there are plenty of board members on village commissions, you decided that it would be better to involuntarily resign all of those commissioners than to allow Jill, a woman of color, to be part of the Public Safety Commission. It's clearly public knowledge that Jill's vision for public safety would be very different from what Skokie's Public Safety Commission currently focuses on. We all know that the that she would support the redistribution of our tax dollars into programs that would address root causes of violence and crime. For example, affordable housing, food security, mental health resources, community care, and so on. She would be a voice on the commission that would counterbalance the problematic focus on policing as the only factor in public safety. Her inclusion would also be a step toward addressing the predominant whiteness of that commission. I'm deeply disturbed that this opportunity to include a much needed BIPOC voice and a much needed voice for non-police solutions to public safety was squashed by an unofficial policy that conveniently appeared at just this time for just this purpose. Even more disturbing is the fact that the village was willing to lose many more voices of color and diverse viewpoints by involuntarily resigning a whole slew of other commissioners. Is the democratic process of actually including diverse viewpoints and voices so threatening to Skokie's veneer of perform performative diversity that you would push out multiple people of color in order to block a particular person of color whose opinions scare you. This is not okay. To be clear, the policy itself is not a problem. There is value in making sure that no one person in this community holds too much power but suddenly trying to make this an official policy right when someone you don't want applies is blatantly transparent. It also begs the question of whether you will apply the same policy to folks who hold board positions in the Skokie Caucus Party. I'm asking you right now to make choices to do better. Your policies and your political maneuverings are causing harm in this community and that does not go unnoticed. Sincerely, Maggie Vandermeer. This is from Matt Timken, Dear Village Leadership. 
Thank you for partnering with Skokie United to celebrate Juneteenth. This is a long time coming for the village, but your advocacy and commitment to black residents must not stop with this event. From policing to affordable housing to economic development, the village has time again failed its black residents. The village must uphold their claim that we welcome everyone and truly honor and cherish our diverse community. I would also like to comment on two other important items. Number one is in regards to an ordinance to reclassify the zoning of 9008 to 9018 Gross Point Road. The proposal to demolish four rental properties with yards to replace with commercial property is 100% against what the village claims it stands for. This is another instance of the village so worried about tax revenue and boosting commercial business that you are more interested in reducing affordable housing stock with norm numerous luxury apartment buildings under construction with no affordable housing units. The last thing the village should be doing is tearing down existing rental properties. Finally, I'd like to address the recent forced resignations of commission members who are also on school boards. I find it very odd that after an outspoken woman of color who serves on a school board applied and was rejected for a position on the Public Safety Commission with the reason given that there's a village policy precluding the service to a school board and commission at the same time. After the applicant challenged this decision, the village decided to enforce this unwritten, never enforced policy and force the resignation of several great community members who serve both on school boards and village commissions. The village should be ashamed of itself and it either made up this rule in response to an applicant who is an outspoken social justice advocate who the village clearly did not want on the public safety commission or simply decided it was time to enforce an unwritten policy to block the candidacy. This is just another example of undemocratic practices of the mayor, village manager, and corporation council who makes these decisions on commission membership and who is responsible for enforcing this so-called policy on board commission membership. If the village is committed to reimagining policing in Skokie, then they should be very determined to have a diverse public safety commission instead of one made up mostly of white men. The village certainly should not be in the business of blocking applicants because they are vocal about policing in America. Thank you for your time today, Matt Timken. This is from Elaine Vincent. I would like a public written reply to these questions. Is there any policy in our village code that prevents elected officials from being appointed to village boards and commissions? Where can this policy be found and when was it enacted? Background. Jill Manrique, current District 219 board member, was recently denied a seat on the village's Public Safety Commission and told by the mayor's office that elected officials are not allowed to sit on village boards and commissions. When she pointed out that other elected school board members currently sit on boards and commissions, the mayor's office decided to abruptly and involuntarily resign these individuals from their appointed positions. Elaine Vincent, uh, 4757 Howard Street. This is from Eric Potters. Dear Mayor Van Dusen and distinguished trustees of the Village of Skokie, hello and good evening, everyone. I personally hope this email finds all of you who've known both myself personally and my family well and hope you and your families are well during these challenging times. I'd like to personally enlighten the entire community of the Village of Skokie and beyond of some shortcomings both myself and my family experienced at the business licensed under Bridgestone Corporation's Firestone Service Center named Firestone Complete Auto Care located at 8801 Skokie Boulevard in Skokie, Illinois on the northeast corner on Skokie Boulevard at Dempster on January 30th, 2021. On the evening in question with a witness present, our vehicle was tampered with in many fashions and this was taken directly to the top to their president and CEO himself, which was then handed down to their claims team manager out of their corporate office in Nashville, Tennessee. Through the exposure of the three card non-communication Monty game between their district manager named Brandon who did once call me via his personal mobile phone to discuss this matter as well as their regional manager named Brandon who altogether avoided any communication as well as their social media contact all besides CFNA Bank's fraud division specialists name omitted we've come to the conclusion that this is not only happening in Skokie but across the nation. Please reference the following link to an investigation undertaken by the State of California, Department of Consumer Affairs, Bureau of Automotive Repairs Chief in 2015. 
their corporation did did try to make things right from the get-go in offering to pay for a tow, which we utilized our AAA membership at no expense to anyone. For the vehicle to be diagnosed by ASE, ASE certified mechanics at a GM dealership in Wheeling to the tune of $320 for two separate diagnostic tests that still haven't remedied the fact that our vehicle was tampered with the evening in question and then jumped by their technician in their parking lot, which fried our entire electrical system, including our ECM, PCM, as well as our Viper alarm system starter, which was then removed per the recommendation of ASE certified mechanics at a GM dealership in Brigman, Michigan, while I was under a two-week quarantine to see the President of the United States of America at Pfizer Labs in Kalamazoo, Michigan, which I was sadly unable to attend due to these serious shortcomings. Our last vehicle exploded on the Eden's Expressway and was towed off of the Foster Avenue exit. We've now connected the dots and thus dotted our I's and crossed our T's with that situation and the events that occurred the evening of January 30th, 2021 at the Bridgestone Corporation Firestone Service Center located in Skokie. As we have forthright and honest with all our communications with Bridgestone Corporation Firestone and their banking institution, CFNA Bank, through their numerous incentives and promotions to gain customers' business and thus trust in servicing their vehicles, our last email communication received from their claims team manager stated after our over four months since this has happened. This is what he wrote. Uh, Hello and good morning. I personally went back to Stasek Chevrolet this morning at 7 a.m. and spoke with Tim. Due to my own business obligations today and tomorrow, we were unable to leave the car for the day. There are still two codes present, P0420 and P0443, which appear to be unrelated to the incident that occurred on January 30th, 2021, and subsequently for the next three plus months where we were afraid to drive the vehicle. It appears, as I said in our initial conversation, that these codes are unrelated. With that, I'd like to discuss closing this out by the end of the business day today, June 4, 2021, with all of the troubles and expenses we endured during the time the car was inoperable. Please call at your convenience as I'll be going out of town later this evening or early in the morning to Central Illinois on business. Phone is the best way unless you want to put everything in writing. If there's no communication or remedy to this situation by the end of the day today, I'll be forced to make all this known to the mayor directly and the entire community at this Monday's upcoming Board of Trustees meeting in Skokie. Looking forward to speaking with you sometime before 5 p.m. Regards, Eric. And then uh, thank you for your time and consideration in reading this in the public record and as stated above in our last communication offering this corporation an olive branch, which they are now denying any kind of liability, i.e. to get out of this situation. We know there is more than us in dealing with this licensed business in the village of Skokie and look forward to and joining with more people who have class. Please respond to me as a representative of my family with any and all action your village will be taking with this matter and as I'm now personally taking you up on your offer when we first met when you said if you need anything let me know well mr. mayor this time has come respectfully Eric M Potters Morton Grove Illinois and we'll make sure the appropriate staff member follows up on that and that concludes the uh, public comments thank you trustee Sutker I move we adjourn for executive session. We are adjourned for executive session.